in the next video, we're gonna in this video actually, we're gonna cover how to take a CAD detail and convert it into a Revit detail cleanly. Okay, uh, that's the key. You wanna now that we're starting to create this folder called Moss Details or EAA Details, we wanna try to keep uh, keep this clean as possible. So if we start bringing in CAD files and exploding them, what's gonna happen is if I was to go to let's say the Annotation tab, one way to tell that things are exploded. Now I can't see them in the schedule. You always let you do anything. Um, if I'm going to annotate and I go to, let's say, text, the way to tell people have been exploding, exploding details, if I come in here and there's like 200 textiles, and it usually says, you know, like Bollard Detail, text 1, Bollard Detail, text 2, Bollard Detail, text 3. So as they explode them, they keep moving out. Now, what we're going to do is try to create clean details. Now, the trick to create a clean detail is um, if you're going to bring details into your project, you may consider putting them here first and then transferring them in. Um, I could bring them in here, get them all cleaned up, and then transfer them to my project nice and clean. So let's say we're going to uh, do a particular one. I think this is a panel of some sort. So let's create a brand new uh, detail view. So I'm in my Moss Details. I go View. Now I'm going to create a detail view. So if you come over here and you poke around, you see lots of different uh, views here. And there's one that looks like a little um, piece of paper with a T-square on it. Now some of you younger people probably don't know what that is, but that that's a tool from the way back when in the dark ages there you go so there's a little t-square sheet right so at this point I'm just gonna call it drafting one and hit OK we'll rename it once it comes in you see how it jumped to kind of a gen generic detail area once we bring it in we can then tell it what type it is and give it a name appropriately but since I really don't know what detail I'm bringing in yet it goes kind of behind the behind there so I've got a nice sheet set up and it has a, a temporary scale it has a temporary name. We'll go to insert and then we're going to link a CAD file. We'll link the CAD file. Now I hit link CAD. Now when I link the CAD file you're going to get this dialog box. I'll go through that again. Under insert link CAD insert link CAD and it's going to throw you out to this view. Um, now at this point I'm going to go to my desktop and on my desktop there's a Revit training folder. If you go to the Revit training folder you'll see one of the folders in here that says details. RFA, DWG, and maybe ID, depending on what folder you open up. When you open this up, you should see one. For instance, I'm going to go, let's see, I'm looking for something that may not be so overwhelming here. Yeah, I thought I'd have an easy one. So you can kind of pop through them, see which one you want to use. Uh, I've got that electrical riser or rebar placement. Exp overhead door section? I don't know. So we got a few of them in here. Rack detail. No, I just did a rack detail. So rack detail. Now you'll notice everything's yellow. Now if you want to try one with the, like the rebar placement, see it has line, it has colors and the line weights there. Whatever one you want to use is up to you. I just want to show you a few of them here, and I'm gonna say preserve the colors. So as they come in, I can see what's happening. I'm gonna hit open on here, and you may see it, you may not. But it's going to bring it into that view. Now, I was lucky enough to see it at the bottom. If not, just type ZE for zoom extents. Now, sometimes, if you think back in the CAD world, you may have drew this eighth inch scale. You may have drew it actual scale. You may do a quarter inch. I really don't know what scale this was drawn to. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here and put a piece of text right here. The text height I want it to be, which is 330 seconds. So I'll go annotate. I'm going to go text, and this is just a way for us to get an idea of the right size of, the, of, this, of this detail. Uh, I'm test, test. Now, on this one happens to be that that text and that text happens to be pretty dang close. But what if they if the scales were off? See, if this scale was said uh, maybe an eighth inch, you see how big the text is? So that's not an eighth inch detail. That detail is done at another scale. So I start to poke through here till I get that detail where the text and the text pretty much line up. So this one was drawn to inch and a half is equal to a foot, whoever drew this detail. So all it is, I put a piece of text in there. And did that work for you? How about you? I know you're in cold medicine, so we're going to move slow. Okay. Richard, were you able to bring it in? Okay, so we got it in there. Uh, and we had this little piece of text and that, that way by changing the scale here we can make sure we're drawing at the right scale because sometimes they look weird like why does it look so weird because the scales jacked up now what we're gonna do is 
we're not going to explode it, but we're going to see the line work here. Now, let's say this was done in, let's say, an AutoCAD uh, setup where red was a thin line, green was a little thicker, yellow was a little thicker, sign was a little thicker. If I know that, if it's coming from my CAD files, I can actually go up top. I'm going to go to now annotate detail lines. Here's where we start cooking with gas. I drop this down and notice we have all of our line types in here from our template. Line number one, I'm going to say pick. So I'm using a little thin line, pick, and here's where you get pretty cool. I hover over the line, hover, tab, see it picked that whole line. Hover, tab, pick that whole line. Now, hover, tab, pick that whole line. Hover, tab, pick that whole line. Now, I'm going to go up, let's say cyan is what? That's number four, color-wise. Is it red, yellow, green, cyan, right? Okay. Yeah. But you kind of see how we have the numbering system now? See, if if I was showing somebody who's hardcore AutoCAD, they may have come from a world where it's always one was thin and you, the thicker they go, they go down. So they could take that four now and say pick. They'll hover, again, hover, tab, pick. Hover, tab, 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 pick. Hover, tab, pick. So now sometimes it'll work, sometimes it doesn't, but notice how I'm picking. And what I'm doing is I'm tracing over it. Notice it's not that complicated. Hover, tab, pick. So I can get this to work. Pick, hover. It's <laughs> all right. Tab, 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 pick it. Hover, tab, 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 pick it. Tab, 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 pick it. Okay. I'm sorry. Annotate. Detail line now. See, you, you got that on center. Drop that down to maybe just one or whatever color you want it to be. See, so one would be red. Then hover over that red line. Hover. We have to use the pick tool, which is right, that green one. There you go. Click on that. Now hover over the red. Hover and hit tab once. Now pick. And then see it just trace that red line. And now you can go around this detail. So I'll do that again. I hit escape. So how we did that was I said detail line. I look at the color, it's cyan, so it's cyan, then I'm going to go to 4. Again, that's just a, however you guys do it in your office. I'm going to use the pick tool, and I can pick the lines. 1, 2. Now, if I want to use the tab command, I see that's a 1, so I'm going to go up top. Set this to a 1. Hover. That's what you say it when you're from New Orleans. Hover. 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 Tab, pick. Roll on this side. Hover, tab, pick. Once you've got that in play, come put some text in, right? Now you notice the text size is right. We know it's working. So annotate, text. I'll use an arrow, right? Go one, two, three, and type in slab, blah, 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 blah. Final thing we do is I take that d detail, I go ahead and I delete it. I'll just say hide and view right now, element. And notice how quickly my detail is coming about. These are all CAD elements. Now I'm just tracing line work. You can use the detailing tools in Revit. Nope, that was just text. So go up top, text. Text with the leader. And now notice this one's not right. You see, see, it's not putting my right arrowhead on there. But see, if I go to put my text and I use my my text, M-A text, see it puts the right arrowhead on and everything because we're pulling from the template. So being that we started from our template on this, how easy that makes it work. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, unhide that detail. Unhide and view. Turn it down. All right. So 
now we go back. You want to put a dimension in here? Annotate dimension. All right. Now, if you dimension, you have to dimension something in the the project because when you remove the uh, detail, you might lose the uh, dimension. So, but uh, go ahead and annotate it up, and you're good to go. So again, that is annotate detail line, pick line, and then pick the color that matches. Again, in this example, so I pick. And it's the top of my slab. Uh, if you want to put hatching in, you can use the hatching tools that are in Revit and trace this around and put the hatch in. So that is how we can quickly make this stuff happen. Another thing is you can do pretty much what uh, I think Kyle did. You just went into the CAD file and cleaned it up and then just brought it in, right? And yeah, left it well, there. I would, uh, I, in, I, I would link the CAD view and then I would go over it because I wanted Mm -hmm. So I would just import it as is, and then I would go in on top of it, copy all the nodes, mm -hmm. and then I'd go back to the CAD file and delete them while I was there. Right. And then I'd take the link, mm -hmm. and I'd just kind of do that. Yeah. And that, then that worked. Now what this is doing is it may take a little bit longer, but once you're done with it, and you take that, that, that final detail, that CAD detail, and you, you get rid of it, you go ahead and, go ahead and get rid of it. That's pinned. You want to go ahead and get rid of it. Then this, for anybody else that wants to edit it, see it's all Revit entities now. Yeah. Um, you could also, which we talked about the other day, um, we have the component details, right? Detail components. And if we had some of them in here, like CMU, you can still use these. And I saw, and you had used some, like for the head jam sill yeah. details. So within here, we have these detailing components, like I brake lines. Yeah. But you could even use them in here, as you can see. So uh, that is just a, a way to kind of cross the, I guess, the divide because you were originally coming from CAD. Now we're in, um, now we're in Revit, and this is 100% Revit. So we're not gumming up our project by exploding CAD files. If you continue to explode CAD files in your Revit database, it becomes corrupt. Um, that's just uh, something to consider. Now. Mm -hmm. And notice we have our line weight in here. It's got a it's got a particular line weight already. When I pick on it, you can see that. See that's the number four. So you can change them if needed. Roll over this, tab this guy. Say, oh, anyone needs to be heavier, just like you would in AutoCAD, make it a heavier line, right? So. How do you select the text? You don't. You actually just kind of type the text right on top of it. So we're just using the line to trace the line work. Oh. So let's go ahead and do that again. So, did we able to get the line work to work for you? Yeah. Okay. Just, just try to go to the next one. You know, as soon as we leave it. No, what you're going to do is hand, hand put those in. Oh, okay. So, a little bit of a pain, but you'll have to go ahead and just re put those in. Okay. Now, that could be somebody you get an intern for the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, I know that's what I did for a couple summers while I was working. I worked at an engineering firm and uh, I did CAD details. There we go.